Hello, hi everybody. This is Dave Wallace coming to you from my home here in Wahiawa, Hawaii, and welcome to Monday Talk Story Time. Uh, today, there are two things I'm going to be uh, speaking about. Uh, the first has to do with uh, my work with spirits and uh, assisting people in clearing their homes or um, you know discovering what's happening inside of their homes and uh, why I do that. And uh, the second thing is uh, discerning. Uh, discerning good spirits from spirits that should not be uh, dealt with. And so those are the two topics I'm going to be addressing uh, today. First of all, uh, the reason I work with spirits okay, is that, uh, number one, I can see them and I can sense them pretty well. Okay, And because I can sense them and see them and sense them very well, uh, people have been calling me uh, all over the island and sometimes even up in the mainland and off island. Um, they contact me because they're having uh, problems in their homes. And these types of problems can be anything from a poltergeist where things are moving around, unexplainable, okay? Or uh, just a strange feeling in the home. So they call me to go and investigate. And I'm not the only person that's doing it. There's a lot of other people, a lot of uh, other uh, kahus, as well as uh, spiritually connected people that do it here, um, not only in Hawaii, but also up in the mainland. So it's not something unusual or something uh, rare, okay? But um, so I use my abilities to help people who are having these problems. And um, the type of problems I run into a lot are um, the, the most common is um, dealing with latent energies. And what do I mean by latent energies? Well, these are energies and uh, of actions of people that lived in the house uh, before the new occupants move in. So we're looking at previous history. What kind of things are happening inside of a house? So if a house was uh, being occupied by a family that was always fighting and uh, nasty things uh, happening inside there, um, all of that is captured within the walls and the environment of the home. And uh, as soon as I walk in and I place my hand on a wall, I can feel that and I can sense that and sometimes I see uh, visuals of what was happening inside the home and that can give me an indication of, uh, you know, residual effect energies that were left over from previous occupants that have not been cleared out. Um, those types of energies um, seem to me, for me, it's an easier one to deal with because uh, we can cleanse it by infusing our own energies and intentions into the walls and into the environment and um, basically create our own um, memories and programming, reprogramming the room uh, for that. So um, when I run across a home that's filled with uh, negative uh you know, residual effects of, from previous owners. That's what I do. I, um, I caution the people. We uh, need to clean the environment, clear the environment. And it's just like scrubbing or erasing uh, the memories from there and moving it on. And after you get rid of the, um, get rid of the, these memories, uh, you need to fill in your intent and program, reprogram the room. So that's one way that I do it, okay? The second, um, the second problem that sometimes comes, uh, that appears in a home is um, residual spirits uh, or transient spirits, not residual, <laughs> transient spirits. And these are uh, spirits that are just moving quickly through a place. And um, sometimes, our homes um, are located along pathways where you know certain spirits have been walking and or using for a long time 
and uh, especially in places that were settled uh, for thousands of years by by people um, if you have a house that's built on a trail or any pathway that was used in ancient times um, you can have um, spirits that continue using the trails and uh, walking through your property and using your property and uh, to deal with these um, spirits exist in a different plane than you so um, you can have them uh, ask them to elevate uh, raise their pathway above the home so that it's no longer an issue and these um, transit spirits um, you, you can tell they're transit spirits because their <clears throat> their presence is kind of like um, here today gone tomorrow okay and these are very temporary things and it's not a constant thing well if you're on a pathway and there's new spirits coming over coming through uh, you're gonna be bombarded by these uh, types of spirits but uh, it's not one spirit it's many spirits and they're just passing through they're not there to uh, settle or claim the area the third type of spirit is uh, spirits who claim the area okay and I run into issues with uh, with spirits who claim um, claim rooms and claim buildings, uh, mainly uh, buildings or rooms that were not occupied for a while or not used. That's why it makes uh, no sense for um, a, a couple of people um, you know, living in a house to have 10 bedrooms, <laughs> okay? Unless they're gonna be sleeping in a bedroom every other night and uh, rotate around and move around. Um, normally, if um, there's two people living inside of a house filled with rooms, um, you're only going to be using one or two bedrooms to sleep or maybe an office space. So you're going to have a lot of uh, empty spaces. And a lot of times spirits, um, if you let an empty space go and you don't claim it, a spirit will come in and begin using the place as if it's theirs and once they started um, claiming areas sometimes it can be difficult removing them and uh, but there are ways to deal with them too um, if a spirit has claimed and uh, claimed the space you need to go in and ask them to move on and uh, use the room and you know, fill it with your mana don't let it sit still and uh, actually the fourth type of spirit or um, spiritual happenings uh, in a home that causes problems are spirits that attach themselves to the owners and uh, follow them home. And some of these things happen w uh, when people are working at uh, sensitive places and um, they get involved in different things and the uh, spirit decides to attach itself to them and uh, you actually end up, end up uh, bringing it home to your place. Um, some of my uh, clients that uh, live, on, live in uh, Schofield, uh, that's what's happened. Uh, they bring home spirits uh, from their workplace and uh, whatever they were involved in, and it attaches to them and they bring it home. And once they enter the home that spirit uh, begins to affect the home also so these are different ways and um, that spirits enter the home and uh, they're either uh, uninvited or this last sometimes we invite them uh, through our actions too okay so um, we need to be careful with uh, with each one so um, these are the types of uh, situation I face with people calling me to help them. And the main reason, again, I am involved in this is that um, I have the ability to sense them and feel them and uh, know the difference. And my job as a kahu is to assist people in dealing with these types to make them feel safe in their own homes and uh, give them advice on how to deal with these types of energies. Most of these energies um, are easy 
really easy to deal with. And uh, sometimes uh, on a rare occasion, do they become uh, difficult. Uh, most of the times, if you are reasonable and uh, approach the spirits in the, in the right way, <laughs> okay, you don't want to cause a war, okay? But if you approach the, um, the spirits and energies in the a, in a right way, um, things can be worked out, okay? So, um, and again, my job is to help people, um, the living, uh, live with these things and uh, be able to um, be able to use their space and um, without being afraid and without being harassed okay so that's my job as a cow now um <clears throat> there was a person that asked me a question about um discerning you know uh, good spirits from evil spirits and there's a false assumption out there that um, you know spirits out there um, that's roaming around. Uh, people, uh, many people, well, some people <laughs> um, think that just because the spirit is there, they assume it's evil. Okay, and it's not my experience. Most of the spirits that are out there are pretty innocent. Okay. And uh, they're just caught in a situation, uh, a sad situation sometimes, where they can't move forward, they can't leave this earthly plane, or else they're existing, they're existing in a level in between worlds, okay, kind of like a limbo. And so, um, my job is to find out where, uh, where these spirits, uh, what type of spirits are out there, and I'm facing and dealing with and um, whether I can work with the uh, spirit or not. So not all spirits are evil. In fact, some spirits are very benevolent, okay? And um, how do you tell the difference? Well, communication is number one, yeah? Uh, listen to what the spirits are, um, are trying to influence you to do. If they are trying to communicate with you and the communication is something that is good and they try to convince you to do something that is good and to warn you about something coming up in the future, um, then you know it's a good spirit, okay? And um, this is where your intuition needs to come in. Um, you know, I'm not against listening to spirits uh, talk to me, either in my head or uh, out there in the environment, and they're talking to me and trying to draw my attention, and I'll listen. And again, the things that I'm listening for is, what are they saying? What are they talking to me about? Okay? And um, while I'm listening, I'm also asking God to help me decide whether this is a good spirit or evil and um, that's where my intuition comes in we need to trust your intuition how do you feel about this if I'm feeling uneasy and I don't feel good and I feel nodding in my in my now and it says this isn't good I just ask the spirit to leave okay and uh, sometimes they try and convince me, even even uh, some of these bad spirits and stuff uh, that come before me. Um, you know, some of the things that they ask me to do is uh, too far-fetched and automatically it says, leave me alone, go see somebody else, go bother someone else. You know, that's not good. And so um, the spirits, uh, if you communicate with them well enough, uh, they will listen. <laughs> and uh, they cannot force you to do anything that you don't want to. Okay. Now, so the good spirits will always, uh, you know, advise you and um, tell you in a, in a way will it will touch your heart and um, cause you to feel like I need to do this. Okay. And it's a prompting. It's a prompting that you feel compelled to follow and listen. 
On the other hand, if something um, in the communication seems off, like they're trying to get you to do something illegal or trying to hurt yourself or hurt others, you know, that's not good. Okay? So listening and paying attention to that now, that intuition in you, that's one way to tell whether a spirit is good or evil. The second one, for those of you who are able to see, visually see, um, the spirits. Um, one of the, the things that uh, we learned from my my mom, okay, and we, I was talking to this about my uh, with my sister. Um, my mom used to tell us um, if we ever meet up with a spirit that we could see and we could and converse um, and talk story with, and they seem to be okay. Um, Extend your hand out in fellowship and just like, you know, to shake their hands. A good spirit and stuff will know exactly what it means and tell you, um, I'm sorry, I'm spirit, you're not going to be able to fight. You're not going to feel me. So, you know, they'll just hold up their hands and say, you know, I can't touch you. Okay. An evil spirit, however, will try and grab you. And when you grab, all you feel is win, nothing. And so that's one another way to tell a good spirit from an evil spirit. The third way that I identify whether a spirit is someone good or someone evil is what they call me. <laughs> what do my what does a spirit call me? Now, for my family members. My mom, my dad, my brother, who's passed on, my uncles, my aunties, and uh, even my grandparents and stuff. Um, when they address me, and I know their voice, okay? I know my mom's voice. I know my dad's voice. I know when my brother Bill is there talking to me because I know their voice. I recognize that. They always address me as David John. That's a name that my family calls me. In fact, on the island of Molokai, I'm David John. <laughs> um, if anybody calls me David John, I know they know me from Hanabara days. Okay? So that's one thing. They call, listen to the name they address you by. My ancestors, that's a different uh, category. When my ancestors address me, they call me by my Hawaiian name. Okay, and they've always done that, and so listen to what they're calling you. When I hear any spirit, or you know, in meditation, as I sit through meditation, and I listen, and there's voices, and uh, believe me, there's <laughs> a lot of um, spirits sometimes trying to grab my attention, and um, I hear all kinds of things: Kahu, you know, Dave, whatever. And um, when I don't hear my name uh, mentioned, these are spirits that don't know me. And um, because they don't know, know me, I cannot trust. Okay? So listen for your name. Uh, you know, for the ones that uh, I trust, they, they're either my, um, my immediate family you know, up until my grandparents or the ancestors that's been talking to me since I was a kid. Okay? And these are the spirits that I developed a strong relationship and bond with. Any new one coming in and stuff, um, trying to um, break through and, and don't call me the right name, I don't allow. Okay? And um, because my, my ancestors, if there's any message uh, for me, I'm going to either hear that from uh, my parents or my grandparents or my brother or my ancestors and uh, we already have that worked out. <laughs> okay, so this is how discerning and it's really important to discern um, what a good spirit is and what an evil spirit is. And again, not all spirits are evil. Some of them are just troubled and they need help. 
And that's where I come in as a call to try and assist and give these spirits that are lost um, an opportunity to find their way. Anyway, I hope you folks learned something today and uh, this was beneficial to all of you. And uh, until next week, uh, this is Dave Wallace from Wahewa, Hawaii. Say mahalo and aloha.